This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. And sisters of the middle class. Nice girls whom Ted desired to possess, he said, as one would possess a potted plant or a Porsche. No multiple murderer before or since has so vividly communicated the essence of his urge as Ted did on those death row tapes or taught law enforcement more about the ways of a serial killer. In the end, you and I would learn the apparent mystery of Ted Bundy was really only a matter of failed perception. The skulls and necrophilia Bundy revisited some victims in their woodland graves for days, so difficult to reconcile with his attractive public persona, were ghoulish but hardly unique examples of how the sexual criminal attempts to create a fantasy that complements his underlying motivations, in Ted's case a monstrous hatred for women and a consuming frantic quest for power, and then tries to realize that fantasy. To the sexual offender, possession is power and total possession is absolute power. Roy Hazelwood taught me that. When I located Hazelwood that night in Des Moines, he was seated alone at a low table, savoring a non-filter lucky strike and a sparkling glass of iced gin, habits he has since reluctantly abandoned. Roy's gaze was obscured by the amber lenses in his aviator frames, a look he'd acquired in Vietnam, and he was bathed in a haze of blue cigarette smoke, Clustered in knots throughout the lobby were dozens of heavy-limbed middle-aged men, each with a practiced grip on his own cocktail hour libation. A glance at their weary eyes and wary posture immediately confirmed that here was a room full of cops. "'Roy Hazelwood?' I asked, approaching the celebrated FBI agent. "'Yes?' He stubbed out his lucky. "'He must be Michal.' Hazelwood rose to extend his right hand. We shook. Have a seat, he directed. Care for a drink? Roy wore a spiffy dark blue blazer, open-necked white shirt, gray slacks, and carefully polished black loafers, an arresting sartorial contrast to this writer in old chinos and the assembled homicide investigators in their cop mufti, double nets and short sleeves. The scene is indelible in my mind, and years later the details still play exactly the same way in my memory. It's humid and the icy cocktail glasses sweat rings through the paper napkins onto the damp formica tabletop. Ecru tufts of stuffing poke up through a hole in the red Nogahide seat of my chair, but what turned an otherwise ordinary night into an ineradicable memory was the conversation with Hazelwood. By evening's end, I'd already begun an extraordinary journey, a frequently harrowing fourteen-year exploration across the shadowy nether edge of human behavior the psychic precincts of the sexual criminal. This book is the record of that trip. Police departments from around the United States and Canada had paid $145 apiece for their detectives to attend the Des Moines meeting, a bargain ticket given some of the big dog crime authorities scheduled to lecture. Besides the meeting's top draw, Hazelwood, speakers included Cook County, Illinois State's Attorney William J. Kunkel, Jr., Four years earlier, Kunkel had won a death sentence for John Wayne Gacy, the portly bisexual serial killer and Democratic Party operative, who strangled or stabbed to death an estimated 33 of his sexual partners, young men and boys, throughout the 1970s. Gacy buried more than two dozen of his victims in the crawl space beneath his house in Norwood Park Township, a northwest suburb of Chicago. Also in Des Moines was Sergeant Dudley Varney, of the Los Angeles Police Department. Varney was a key investigator during LAPD's Hillside Strangler case of 1977 and 1978, the string of ten, and possibly more, brutal torture murders for which serial-killing cousins Kenneth Bianchi and Angelo Bono ultimately were caught and imprisoned. Another of the presenters was Bob Keppel, chief investigator for the Washington State Attorney General's Office, and probably the world's most experienced serial killer hunter. At the time of the symposium, Keppel was advising various law enforcement agencies in western Washington on the Green River Killer cases, the serial murders of dozens of prostitutes that remain unsolved today. Hazelwood brought to the Des Moines meeting an altogether different perspective. A member of the Bureau's elite behavioral science unit based at the FBI Academy at Quantico, Virginia, 
Roy's domain is the sexual criminal's mental and emotional planes, the deviant mind's hot zones, where lust and rage...